was wet and the sky was dark. You took her bed, she took your heart. I don't know. Wrapped it around an oak tree like you did that 67 GT. So welcome back friends. We've got another cool project for you guys today. So Brian and Jack and I are working on this. And what we have here is we've got six cedar four by fours uh, that I am priming and prepping for paint. And what we're gonna do with these is uh, we're gonna build a really, really cool yardage markers uh, on our range out uh, to the north on the property, out to 600 yards. And I was kind of thinking, you know, it, it's, we have like, we have folks over and uh, since we have such a nice range set up, people are asking, hey, can I com come over? It'd be nice to have these laid out because we know what they all are, but sometimes when I'm spotting for someone, I'm like, go ahead and, and, and go on the 300, 400, 500, and, and it's, there's a little bit of confusion. So I thought, let's do it, do it really nice, and we're gonna do uh, these posts as markers. So what we're gonna do is we'll do like an airport style. So we have the red and white with a nice military style stencils on it, but you'll see here. So I'm just putting this first coat of primer. Uh, there are six posts here for the six targets, up, as I said, out to 600. And uh, when this dries, then we'll paint them white and then we'll start doing the striping. So while we're waiting for that paint to dry, uh, Brian and I are gonna clean up that, we have a little hump in our bridge there. So we're gonna run the chalk light across there, um, mark that off and cut that off flush. And then we'll lay out, and I think we have all the stuff picked out for the handrails, right? Yep, we do. We've got some nice posts for that. So we'll uh, trim that up real quick and then we'll jump into it. Yeah, I'd, I'd go right to the cut edge there and, and I'm gonna have to kind of estimate yeah, look at that. How much higher it is, yeah. We must have got hung up on a little nub or something. All right, uh, go ahead and pull me a little bit tight, tighter. And are you happy with that? It looks good on this side, yeah. Okay, I'm going to give it a snap. So we snapped the line, and just as we thought right there, you can see on the blue line, somehow, uh, when we did the original chalk line, it got... Um, must have got moved but we need to trim anywhere between probably about almost an inch right there off that one side so we'll trim that off real quick we'll just we'll freestyle it and then uh, we can get to work on the layout I'm taking all the gray off this lug so we can use it for our handrail Stephen Hawking, he discovered black holes before anybody had ever observed a black hole. You know, he was able to figure out mathematically, like, hey, these things have to exist. Just see what I'm going to leave it on here. Would you grab the small forest axe? in the back of the tractor. So what I've done right here is this is the very center of the bridge. Uh -huh. I've cut a mortise uh, in here at uh, just, what what is it, probably six degrees or so. So to get an average, see how it's, how it's a bit of an angle there? Uh -huh. So we'll lay the, just lay a, something like this flat across here. And when we cut these, this will give us a whole average across the face of the log. And look in here now. We have to, we got it backwards. We have to cut that uh, that mortise to fit that angle mm -hmm. on both on all three sides here. So we'll check it like that there. See, we're a little bit, a little bit off there in the bottom, mm -hmm. and then here, off on the bottom, a little bit right there. But we'll uh, clean that up. But what what we need to do now is we need to cut the tenon in the log. Overcompensating.
because that lodge pole is incredibly dense. Yeah. A nice feel to it. It does. It's got a lot of twist in it. Yeah, that one's like a spiral. Barber poles. You can just shave that last bit pretty good. Let me see a little bit of saw action there. How close are you on your... Well, I was just going to double check. I'm getting close, but I don't think I'm quite there. Cut that waste out of that. We're not down low enough. Would you jump down and see? Is it reaching the bottom of the mortise? Nope. How far does it have to go? I'd say four inches. Oh wait. Probably three inches. Three inches? Okay. So I've got to cut those a little bit tall, a little bit higher next time. Okay, Jack, let's make sure we keep these posts uh, next, to the, next to their mortises because uh -huh. they're all kind of custom fit. So this will be number one. Uh, Brian's working on two. They, and three is done. Three is done. Four and five are done. Let's check the fit on the uh, three, Jack. Number four, we're gonna have to shim because for some reason I got the angle way wrong. Okay, but apart from this is the last one I'm working on right here. Okay, no problem, we can shim that. Down to the bottom of our mortise. Yeah. That looks good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that one's done. Let's go to, do we have another post? How many have I cut? Only three? One, there's one right there on the other side. One, two, three. Oh, that one there, okay. There is a, there, I saw a bigger one. I just, um, man. There's a, a YouTuber, um, Canadian prepper, I think. He had a, he had one that was twice that long. But I, on the video, I think it wasn't in production. And I don't know if they made it special for him or where he got it. But this is, I think this is the smallest of the three. There is one bigger than that. Really? Yeah. I mean, the heat's not fun, but everything else is pretty fun. No, and the, the heat's not that bad yet. Could and will be worse. I should have brought my carpenter's axe over. Oh, that'd be good for that little bit. Uh, do a little bit more on that side, Jack. I was going to. I'm just. Yeah, mm. let's finish one side before we go on, move on. The nice thing is you get that standing grind. It allows you to get the axe closer to the face. Yeah, that's yeah. where it shines, isn't it? Yep. Have you noticed how in uh, Star Trek the, the universe has no sorts of laws? If somebody fires upon you, instead of carting them away to prison, you fire upon them and destroy them. <laughs> yeah, that's a wild frontier. How's our depth? That's actually like perfect. It's perfect? Yeah, pretty much. 
All right, that's the last of the five. All right, that's it for today's show. We had a pretty good showing. We've got uh, the five posts cut. We got the uh, Brian cut uh, the majority of the, the mortises. Jack and I cut the tenons uh, on the uprights. We this, did many things. We did. We made a lot of chips here. Uh, next time I'll get the lag bolts, um, uh, the galvanized bolts, and then we'll bolt this thing on, get everything shimmed and all lined up, and then we can put the handrails on. I think I mentioned this, but if I didn't, if you're just joining us, this bridge is a copy of, of a temporary bridge that was designed by the United States Forest Service. So in the winter time, if a stream washes out the main bridge, they'll uh, volunteers will go in and put one of these up, and they have a handrail on one side, so it's it's safe for hikers and whoever recreating people. Recreating peoples uh, can go across until they have the time, resources, and funding to replace the bridges. So uh, that's it. So next time we'll put the full rails on. I think we're really fortunate. Brian, you picked out a couple. We have a couple long rails that we can get in one piece. That's right. Yeah, it's 24 footers that are nice, even. Don't have a lot of taper in them. So um, yeah, stay tuned for that. And then we have a beautiful place picked up, uh, picked out for to put the to span where the bridge is going to span. It's, uh, two streams coming together and a little mini waterfall. It's really nice. So is there shade there? There is shade. Yes. Yeah, it's it's underneath the big twin Doug fir trees. Uh, and then we could get to surprise uh, Mrs. W. She doesn't know what we're doing. Uh, she all she knows is we're out here chopping on a log and making a big mess in her yard, which we do a lot of anyway. Yes. Yeah. So we'll surprise her with that. So, all right. Thanks for watching and uh, thanks, Brian. You're welcome. And we'll see you guys on the next video. Don't think I could be any more proud of that boy. He is uh, shaping up, thanks to his mother, shaping up, turning into a, a quite a fine young man. You know, as I, as you guys have known, I, Jack and I recently uh, got into dirt bikes, and and the reason why, um, and the main reason why, uh, is uh, to give us something um, to do together uh, that we really enjoy. And I'll tell you, last uh, last weekend. Uh, we went uh, we went riding. Uh, Brian was with us, and another friend of mine, Jesse, who's a very experienced rider, and he took us to a place uh, that was pretty challenging um, that we'd never ridden before, and uh, it was a lot of climbing and and uh, ex uh, difficult trail conditions. And, um, and Jack and Brian, to both their credit, uh, and they persevered and they got themselves up to the top and. And those of you who follow my Instagram page, I included a picture of that. Uh, it was um, a magnificent view. And uh, more important than that was it was a magnificent accomplishment um, for Jack. Uh, it was, um, you know, he's, he's in that transitional stage, you know, where he's um, coming out of uh, childhood and, and into becoming a young man. And it's really important for me to have him... Um, to have these achievements and to make a very um, definite uh, line of transition. I don't want him to, to have to live in that gray area and be 30, 40 years old wondering if he has ever, if he has stepped into manhood. And to be able to, um, uh, for him to be around uh, these positive role models, role models, uh, good men like Brian and some of the other friends that um, I have that have volunteered at the fire department, um, it was just wonderful. It was wonderful to see him uh, come up and to sit with us there and to be an equal. He got himself up there. Uh, he overcame his fear. He overcame the challenge. Uh, and he had every right to sit up on top of that hill. Uh, with the three of us and um, I just couldn't have been more proud on the way home we talked about you know what we wanted to do in the future and and uh, you know what we were going to do with the last few years that we have and, uh, and we decided that it was time for him to get um, a, a big motorcycle you know he's one he's one he's riding on is what he learned on and it's obviously too small for him and holding him back a little bit and I told him I said if you stick with this and 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 show me that you can um, you can um, learn how to do this and, and to do it well um, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I'll provide you the equipment that you need to, to excel and so today's a big day for us we're gonna go, uh, drive into the city into Portland and we're going to get Jack um, uh, a big bike uh, his first not quite full size but pretty close uh, and we're super excited about it so uh, we'll go in there today and, uh, and get that and then uh, maybe this evening we can uh, shoot a little video show you what we got but uh, both of us are excited and it's a big day it's a it was a so it's a wonderful I guess this is the reason why right here this video as I was editing it um, this is the reason why we made the decision to do this so that we could have time 
uh, that we could work together and we could raise our kids in this environment. And I feel very, very blessed to be able to do it. And I'm not saying that this is the only environment or this is the best. It's not. It's just, it's just what's best for our family. And, um, and I have no regrets. So thanks for watching. And we'll see you guys on the next video.